What's up, it's Ryan. In today's content review, we are breaking down Webflow, one of the top CMSs out there. If WordPress is the CMS for bloggers, then Webflow is where serious business owners go to build, manage, and grow their websites. I've used Webflow for different clients and at different day jobs of mine over the past decade, and I honestly love the platform. I have a lot of great things to say about it, but in this video, I wanna show you some of the good things they're doing with content and some of the bad. I uncovered a few things that I would do differently, and I wanna show the Webflow marketing team exactly what those things are in this video. But first, let's start out with a little bit of love because right here, Webflow is promoting this brand new 2026 state of the website report. And I really liked this. Right now, it's about middle of November 2025 as I'm recording this. And so they're using this as a lead generation tool. I really like this, but they've got some really nice features here. And of course, since it's Webflow, everything they make is beautiful. It's gonna look really pretty. I'm sure the report does too. I wanted to highlight this thing I liked a lot up near the top. They dynamically change the in insights that they're presenting based on who you are. The, and these are kind of the three top personas of people they sell to. So this is a pretty smart business savvy decision they've made. And as they know already, the AI platforms like ChatGPT, they love data. And so when you see data up near the top in these types of pages, that's really optimizing a page like this to be swooped into these AI platforms and be cited as a source. And they've got some really cool little simple content snippets. They do some nice containers where they hide stuff here and they dynamically pop it up. They've got 2026 mentioned very clearly right here. There's a lot of intentionality here. The word AI is everywhere on this report page. And that is very intentional and thoughtful. So this report looks awesome. I just wanted to throw a quick shout out here because this is the kind of thought leadership content that more brands should be doing. And you don't have to be a big brand in order to see real results from doing this type of content. Now, naturally, it doesn't have to look as amazing as Webflows does because they have a huge team working on putting together beautiful, pretty resources like this. But you can take inspiration from this strategy and apply it to your own business so that you are leading the conversations around what's going on in 2026 in your niche and in your industry. Next, let's take a look at some of the smart ways that Webflow is organizing their content. So I'm gonna hit this resources button. This gives us a mega menu of dropdown options here. There's a ton of stuff going on. And in this video, we're gonna just focus on the main elements of where Webflow drives their traffic and presumably the majority of their leads for their business. And so we're gonna be focusing the majority of our time on their templates pages and on their blog posts. So I pulled up Webflow here inside of Ahrefs just to get a quick snapshot of how their content is doing, how they're driving traffic to their website and what that trend line looks at. We can see here that about, let's say in February of this year, Webflow was generating somewhere around Ahrefs estimate here, around 2 million people per month to their website. Today, that number looks like 1.1 million. Again, these are estimates. Real data is definitely gonna be a little bit different, but directionally, this is very useful. And the first thing I noticed is that there's a really big discrepancy here between where Webflow's traffic was at in February of 2025 versus where it's at here in November, 2025. There's a major haircut that's happened. They've lost approximately 900,000 monthly visitors to their site, which is absolutely meaningful, no matter the scale of your business. That's a huge decline. And the real results may or may not be exactly that, right? But directionally, I find that these tools are usually pretty accurate. So I wanted to dig in and see where the majority of these traffic losses appeared to be coming from, to see if we could uncover some ways that Webflow could recover their traffic. And that led me first and foremost to the templates directory on Webflow, which by the way, this this is an amazing execution on a templates resources page like this. This is essentially an entire business right here that Webflow just has running on templates because users of Webflow can upload templates they've built and sell them in this marketplace function right here. But at the end of the day, this is ultimately an SEO play, one that has gone off fantastically well. And I try not to give too much free praise here, but honestly, it's much deserved. Here's a quick snapshot of how Webflow's traffic just to these templates pages has grown over the course of the last couple of years. We can see two years ago, it was at around 55,000 estimated monthly visitors to these templates pages and all the individual templates that rank for all of their own niche keyword phrases. Moving on up here, they have grown that traffic pretty considerably over the past two years to an estimated 87,000 people a month hitting these individual templates pages. Now, I wanted to investigate 
why the blog here on Webflow has been going down in traffic. You can see that about two years ago, they were driving an estimated 340,000 people a month to their blog content alone. Today, they're at a fraction of that, 86,000. Still very meaningful, don't get me wrong, but that is a really meaningful drop in traffic. And so I wanted to pick out one of their most popular articles, and it's this one right here. 23 portfolio website examples plus best practices to attract clients. And I wanted to show you a few things things about this post that I would do differently and how I would tune this up to attract more people to it. And one of the first things I wanted to see is how many times this primary keyword phrase is actually mentioned on this post because keyword density is often a factor that a lot of content creators overlook. And even people who are really skilled at marketing and SEO sometimes overlook this. They're managing large portfolios of content. It's easy to sometimes miss. But what I noticed was that the primary keyword phrase portfolio website examples is only mentioned three times in this entire piece of content. And it's good news a very easy optimization opportunity to improve that keyword density. When I quickly scrolled here, I could see author box. There is no specific author connected to this post. This is another red flag that I found on several of Webflow's posts. Both search engines and the AI platforms want to see that content is being created by a real person. There's still value placed on that. Now, when I get into the meat of the content, the thing that I noticed first and foremost is I need to see this keyword phrase, portfolio website examples, mentioned even higher. Do a little bit better of a job tuning up that first sentence with your primary keyword phrase in mind. And then we dive into the tips here. I'm a fan of tips in articles. I think that's useful. However, the entire positioning of this article is around portfolio website examples. Those can come later in the article. And I would recommend bumping this content down further on the page below the list of website portfolio examples. That's gonna help this piece of content. I'm pretty, pretty confident about that. But one thing that I wanted to call your attention to is their get started for free call to action. To me, this call to action is not as visually arresting as it could be. I'm confident that they could have a much more clear and direct call to action directly inside this content too. I would wanna see Webflow have a call to action, perhaps even right here, just below the intro and before they get to the 23 examples and they could get clever with it. They could say, design a portfolio website just like this using Webflow, right? A lot of elements that I liked last and not least least, I wanted to just scroll down here and make note of something. There's some nice chunky content here that's already pre-optimized for 2026 here. We're heading into the 2026 year. They've got the 2026 mentions across this content. That's nice. I like that. There's a lot that Webflow could be doing to better promote themselves without being too biased in this content. And finally, I see the date that this post was updated. Now, this is a design choice is what I would guess that Webflow has this down here at the very bottom of their content. However, as a user, I like to see when a post was published or updated somewhere near the top. And visually, it would not take up much room to just slide it in right here in this little top container or get it you know, just below this Webflow author box or just above it or something. Because as we know, the LLM crawlers they want to save budget. They want to save time. And so they may not make it all the way down to the very bottom of this page in order to read when this article was most recently updated. Even though this article was updated pretty recently here in October, 2025, we spotted a lot of opportunities to improve it and thus drive more traffic to it. So I wanted to run this article through my tool refresh, where we automatically update and optimize websites, existing content. So I wanted to pop this in here into our auto optimizer, where I've got this article preloaded and what we do is we imported this content from its URL. You can see it. It pulled everything in here into the editor container and it gave it an immediate SEO score of 17. Very low. That's a very, very low score. I would expect higher of Webflow because I know that their marketing team is really skilled at what they do. And the good news is that they're already punching on this topic. So it's something where they could drive a lot more traffic to this article. They could reclaim their ranking. So I'm gonna pull up the suggestions here to see which exact SEO recommendations the AI is giving for this particular article so that we can improve it and get them ranking higher. Expand the content to include more portfolio categories. I like that. I'm gonna add that to the plan. Optimize page title and meta description for CTR and relevance. I love it. Let's add that to the mix. Refresh and update time sensitive content. We see some 2026, 2025 related stuff. I'm not going to touch that. They handled that pretty well in their update recently. Adding a key takeaway section for scannability and LLM optimization. That's a no brainer. There's no key takeaways near the top of their article. Now creating an FAQ section. There were some FAQs that I think were missed that could be woven into say the bottom of this article and would help it. So I'm going to add four out of those five recommendations to our SEO plan. And I'm going to hit optimize. 
Now, behind the scenes, what's happening during this refresh process is our AI is analyzing how to best implement the recommendations. And we'll see this SEO score start to jump up as these recommendations are being implemented inside our article. And as we can see here, there's a bunch of sources we've gotten from all of the other pieces of content that are ranking higher on Google search than Wix is. And right here, I wanna bring your attention to something useful. We pull in all of the top ranking pieces of content that are already above where Webflow is in Google search results for this topic. And I see some competitors to Webflow. So I want them to rank above a site like Wix. I want them to rank above Figma. I want them to rank above Hostinger. All of these companies are competitors. And so by updating, improving this content, we're gonna increase Webflow's chances of ranking higher. And over here on the SERP tab, you can just see some quick SEO analysis here. We've got average cost per click. We've got the monthly search volume, the competition level, keyword difficulty, search intent. And we've got this nice little chart showing the trends in how many people are searching per month for this topic on average. And then we've got our top results in here. Coming back to our SEO report, we can see that the score is gradually climbing up as the optimizations and improvements are being implemented. And we'll be right back with this as soon as it's complete. One more thing to mention though, is that you'll notice the keyword coverage for this article is really, really low. We've got a bunch of keywords here that are in the green and some were just added by the way during this optimization process, but there were a lot starting out that hadn't been mentioned either at all or enough in this article in order to really position it well for higher rankings and for those LLM citations. And so we're seeing more of these keywords turn to green as the update is processing its recommendations. And boom, here we go. We can see that this article was optimized up to an 80% now, which is a really big increase. It started at a 17, which is very, very low. We've still got some keywords that weren't fully covered the total number of recommended times. However, they are mentioned in the article, so I'm not gonna be too much of a stickler about that. The point isn't to always optimize up to a 100%. That's not necessary. You can sometimes run the risk of over-optimizing your content, but what is important is that you're somewhere in the green here, which we have achieved in this update. Now, if I liked all these changes, I would just click accept all. It's gonna process all of those updates. Now there's an element of this where as a Webflow marketer, I would want to make sure that I'm vetting the examples it added because I'd want to make sure I'm adding actual Webflow users' websites and they probably have a list of people that they may wanna feature in this article. So I would do that section a little bit more by hand manually myself. However, this looks to be a pretty substantive update to this article and I like where this went. It added some more SEO rich content down here at the end, it crammed in those FAQs. And this article is probably about another half hour to an hour away from some finishing touches editing, because again, this is a really important piece for the Webflow marketing team. So I'd spend a little time giving this some love and I'm gonna go ahead and share this with the Webflow marketing team. Let me just make this a shareable URL and I'm gonna go ahead and send this over to them. If you'd like to have your website reviewed, drop a comment below and let me know. Share the link to your site or shoot me an email to ryan at itsrefresh.com. And if you'd like to take refresh for a spin to update and improve and optimize the content of your website, then go ahead and start your free trial over at itsrefresh.com.